Hi there. Thank you for joining me. I'm Tracy. I love to upcycle clothes, purses, accessories, things like that. Take thrifted items or pre-owned items and breathe new life in them and turn them into one-of-a-kind wearable art or just reshape them into something more trendy and updated. And today, I want to upcycle this skirt. Now, this is a very thin sort of sheer with a little bit of pattern and underneath is a lining. Now, this is all polyester. It's a size medium, so it's going to fit me and we're going to dye it and add sequins and all kinds of beautiful things to completely transform this. So let's get rolling. So the first thing I did here was cut this skirt, the lining and the sheer fabric. I cut the sheer fabric 11 and 3 quarter inch up all the way around. And then I cut the lining 8 and a quarter inch all the way around. So now I have this skirt, which is just now sort of below knee level. It'll be longer when I'm done. And the lining extends past this sheer fabric about three inches or so. It really doesn't matter as long as it's in the ballpark. Now what I want to do is make a ruffle and attach it to the lining. I'm not working on this piece yet. Now, I thought about three different things here. So, one, I have this tool from an old wedding dress. And if it was a little bit thinner and wispier, flowier, I would have used that. But it's a little too stiff, so I'm not going to use that. And I also have this lacy tablecloth. And it's kind of a thin, wispy lace. I thought about that, but... I think what I'll do is I have this, what it was was a mother of the bride dress that my girlfriend gave me and her mother didn't want to wear it. It's actually brand new, but it's donated to me. And you know, when you're an upcycler, people give you lots of fun stuff. And so this has been sitting around for about a year. I, you know, I don't want to waste it because it's so nice and was special to them momentarily, but this has an overlay of this sort of embroidered sort of netting, almost like a tool. So I am going to see if I can cut enough off of this, avoiding seams, to create that ruffle at the bottom of the lining. So now I'm just going to try to take this apart and there's no exact way to do it. You just have to feel out your own individual garment. I am first going to cut along all the seams and just kind of taking an inch at a time and see what I have to work with here. So there is that fabric. Now there's a seam down here. I'll just carefully cut and salvage as much as, it, as I can and get it laid out and see what I have to work with. So now I have several pieces of this cut, everything that's actually salvageable off the dress. And I decided to go with a six and a half inch tall ruffle that I will attach to the lining. So I am just going to cut six and a half inch strips of this, I guess it is tool. It's sort of a embroidered tool. So that's what I will call it. And I will just try to get as many six and a half inch strips from my remnants here that I can. Now what I want to do is here's the lining. I want to measure the perimeter of the bottom. So I'm just taking my tape measure my measuring tape and measure across and I get 25 inches. Now I'm going to double that because there's two sides and that gives me 50 inches. So that's my perimeter of the bottom. What I like to do with ruffles, the rule of thumb is double that measurement if you want to create a ruffled look. So if I have 50 here, I'm hoping for 100 here and 
I have 101. <laughs> I don't know how things like that work out for me, but they do. And so, and that even gives me a little room for seam allowance. I could have managed with maybe even 80 inches, but I'm glad I have 100. Now what I want to do is here are the six and a half inch strips that I got cut from the dress. And I want to sew them all together in one big long line. Now I am going to put uh, wrong sides together so that the seam is on the outside. That's the beauty of these boho designs. Seams and fraying are okay. So what I'll do is put wrong sides together and I won't pin this or anything. I'll just take it to my machine and I will sew a quarter inch seam allowance right at the edge. And then when I get that one sewn, I will just take the next strip, wrong sides together, sew that until I have all the strips sewn. I will use a straight stitch on this and I am going to use light blue thread because that's the color I will be dyeing it. Now I have my strips all sewn together. And while I'm sitting at my machine here, what I'm going to do is choose which side I want to be the bottom. Actually, I want this side to be the bottom. And so this will be the bottom. And I am just going to set my machine on my largest zigzag stitch and I am just going to stay close to the edge and run a zigzag stitch all along the entire 100, 101 inches just so that this embroidery doesn't come completely unraveled. It'll still fray a little bit at the bottom, but that zigzag stitch will stop any excessive fraying. And now, if you have a serger, you can certainly serge it, you can ham it, you can do whatever you want, but this is sort of my easy cheat of choice. Okay, so now I have this all sewn together and zigzagged at the bottom, and now I want to sew the ends together just to make it like a big circle. And so I'm going to put wrong sides together. And just like we stitched all these pieces together, I'm just going to put a straight stitch, quarter inch seam allowance, close it all up. So now what I want to do is pin this ruffle to my lining. And so I laid out my ruffle nice and flat because I want to find the very end because I want this to go evenly on here. So I am going to just take my blue um, Taylor's chalk and mark that. And then I'm going to come to the opposite end and mark that. Then I know that is one end and this is the same distance on both sides from here to here. So now what I'm going to do is take this and overlap about half an inch onto the lining where this mark is. I will mark, won't mark, but I'll find the side, the seam of this lining, overlap that half an inch and pin it. Now I'm going to come to the opposite side, find my blue mark, Find the opposite side seam, overlap half an inch, and I'm going to pin that. This is just so that the ruffles are evenly distributed around the skirt. Now I'm only working with half of this, and I'm still on the front side. I'm just scooching the other half kind of out of the way for now. Now I'm going to lift this up. And I'm going to find the approximate center of this ruffle and find the center of the front here, overlap half an inch. Now, none of this is exact. It's, if you measure this, it will take you forever. So I've always had really good luck just eyeballing it. Now, I have a pin here and a pin here. 
I'm going to that ruffle and I'm finding the center again and I'm going to lay it in the center of those two pins, overlap half an inch and pin it. And I will just keep going and I'll get smaller and smaller until I have all my little ruffles pinned. And then I'll sew it, but I'll show you that in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and get that pinned. Now I have everything pinned and I'm going to take it to my machine and stitch this on with a zigzag stitch. And I will just slide it into my machine at a side seam, go forward back and just sew all the way around until everything is secure. And see, we still have little gaps here. You just have to make a decision when you're sewing. Do you want those to come towards you? Because you kind of have to fold that over as you sew. So either towards you or away from you, but make them all go the same direction. I have the ruffle all sewn on. And now I'm just going to take it to my ironing board and just press over top of where I just stitched there. Now what I want to do is start working on this part. And what I want to do is create little triangles, a row of little triangle pieces of fabric that will layer over top of this piece. Now, mine has a raw edge. This is where we cut that top layer of the skirt. You can finish yours however you want. If you want to serge it, zigzag stitch, hem it, whatever, but I'm leaving mine raw. If it frays, it's just fine for me. So what I need to do is cut out a bunch of these and I'll show you, I made a little pattern, I'll show you. I cut a seven by seven inch square out of a piece of paper and now I am just going to cut a corner off and I need to measure down two and a half inches on this side, two and a half on this side. And now I'm just going to connect those dots and I need to find my correct scissors so I don't ruin my sewing scissors. And I'm just going to cut that corner off. And there's my pattern for the little triangles that we need. Okay, so for that row of sort of triangle fabrics, I'm going to use three different fabrics. And I know it might be kind of unclear what we're doing, but I promise you it will make sense as we go along. So one that I'm going to use is, this is the bottom of the skirt that we cut off, the top layer. And then oh, this is actually the mother of the bride dress came, I already cut on this a little bit, but came with this sort of cover up. And so that will be one fabric. Now these will all fray and that's what I want and perfectly okay. I'm not going to finish the edges on these. Now I found this sort of damask tablecloth. I believe it's linen, possibly cotton, but it has a little bit of a tone on tone pattern, textured pattern, and I really like the feel of it. So these are the three fabrics I'm going to make those triangles with. Okay, so now it's just time to cut a bunch of those triangles with that chopped off top. And I am not going to pin this down. I'm not going to trace around it. I am just going to start cutting because they do not have to be perfect. It's almost cuter if they do stagger a little bit. Some are a little larger, some are a little smaller. So this just gives me, you know, something rough to trace around here. And I will just cut a bunch of these and then the other two fabrics. And I can't tell you right now how many to cut out, but when I'm all done, I can tell you how many I cut out of each. So I will just cut away and get my triangles made.
Okay, so now I have a few little piles. I could actually cut more of those of my triangles, and then I'm going to show you how I sew them on to the skirt. Okay, so I'm just going to lay my triangle. I will sew it onto this top piece, but I want it to overlap this bottom ruffle. So I'm just going to toss it on my skirt here. Now these side points, I'm just going to let them hit that ruffle. When they hang, they'll actually be below that ruffle, but in order to mark this, I want them to be right at about the top of the ruffle. And then I'm just going to take oh, something to mark with, and I'm going to use my Taylor's chalk here. And I'm just going to make a little dash right at the top cut off end of that square here. And then there's my dash. Okay, so here's where I made that red mark. Now I'm going to measure to see how high it is from the very bottom of this top layer of skirt, and it's two inches. So now I'm going to take that top layer and just make some dashes all the way around at the two inch height. And that will actually be my sewing line when I sew these triangles on. Now I have my dashes all marked at two inch, and how I will sew these, I will show you actually, since this might be kind of hard to see, I'm just going to make some dashes on my tablecloth here, and pretend that that's my red dash line on here. And so what I'll do is alternate my three different fabrics, and I will start sewing, I like to start on a side seam, and I will put the top part of this chopped off square under my needle, go forward and back, and then I'll make two or three pleats, depending on how they're feeling. As I, you know, the sheer fabric will pleat different than this thick. So I basically just want this to be maybe an inch and a half when I'm done sewing. So just pleat it on top of itself, sew across, take the next one, stick that edge right up against there, keep sewing, and make your little pleats. And I will do that all the way around. My fiance was just down here and I, he's like, what are you doing with those? And I told him, he goes, whoa, that seems time consuming. But for me, I think this will go fairly fast. And keep alternating. Okay, so I'm at my machine. I'm just going to use a fairly small straight stitch. Now I'm sticking the bottom of that skirt under my presser foot. And I'm starting at a side seam. And here are my red dashes. I have my needle sort of lined up with that. I'm going to take my little linen and go forward and back and then make a little pleat. Well, I'm going to stick my needle in, lift that up so I can stick that pleat underneath the presser foot here. Go along that. Just take your time. Just make little pleats. Now I'm at the corner of that one. I think I will add the shear. Let's see. Lift up my presser foot, stick this under. You know, this is this is art. Just play with it. There's no rules. Get it on there any way you want to. Okay, so here it is so far. Now, I ran out of that lace from the skirt, and I had to switch over and use some lace from a tablecloth. And if you are able to improvise and make do with what you have, you're ahead of the game. I've decided, you know, you kind of just feel it out as you go. I've decided at the bottom of this original 
lace underneath those triangle pieces, I want to add a strip of fringe. Now I have a whole tub full of fringe and I got a lot, I get a lot from flea markets and there's a indoor flea market year round called Crazy Frank's in Reedstown, Wisconsin, I believe. I did a really big score there one time. There was a lady, she just had shelves of fringe and lace at really good prices. And I think that's where I got this. So I'm just adding, let's see, two inch fringe to the very bottom of it. Now I'm using dye more dye on this and that's for synthetics. And this is a synthetic fringe and it should dye just fine. So what I'm going to do is just kind of dig through and find that original ruffle that we sewed on. And I will just put this on top, overlap it. There's an area to sew right here. I'll lay that over top of the edge. I'll actually be going the opposite way, but um, I'll just do a straight stitch. You can fold this little end over if you want when you begin stitching so you don't have a raw edge. Stitch all the way around. And when you get back to this end, fold the other piece over and overlap that a tiny bit. Here's what we have so far. And I have a little bit of a problem with it. I wish these triangles were up a little bit higher so that I could see more of this pretty ruffle underneath. So I'm going to cut it off and re-sew it higher. So basically I'm just going to cut it right above that fabric and stitch line that I sewed. Get it all cut off. Okay, so I want the ruffle, it was here. I want it an inch and a quarter higher. And so I went around with my Taylor's chalk and marked an inch and a quarter. So I have a guideline when I sew it back on and I am just going to go back to my, my machine and sew it at that chalk line. I know my arms are probably in the way. Okay, I'm much happier with that. I can move forward. Now I want to add a ruffle above that pointed row that we sewed. And I have a set of curtains that I thrifted and they have an eyelet ruffle on them. And that's what I'm going to use. Now I'm cutting the ruffle off of the curtain. It has this little band where the ruffle is already pleated a little bit. I want to save that. That will save me time not having to pleat the ruffle. So I am just cutting this slightly above that stitched band so that it's intact. And I have an already pre-made little ruffle that I don't have to do anything with except sew it on at the band. Okay, so now I'm going to take that eyelet ruffle and I am going to sew it five inches above the stitch line. Yours may be different heights, but my goal is to just cover, overlap this to cover up that stitching and raw edges. And so it would look something like this. Now, if you're curious about measurements, this ruffle is five and three quarter inch tall this one from the top of the fabric to the point is eight and a quarter inch. And then this one from the top of the fabric to the bottom of the fringe is eight and a half inches. Now I am going to take this off my mannequin and I will just go around with my Taylor's chalk and mark five inches, just make some dashes. So I have a nice guideline for when I sew and I'll begin to sew in the back this time and just somewhere sort of in the center i'll start sewing 
I'll have the red dashes. I'll sew right on that line. And then when I get all the way around, I will just overlap. I got a lot of ruffle to work with here. Okay, so when I get all the way back around, I will just overlap that ruffle a couple inches. I won't do any hemming or piecing that together. I will just overlap it and that will be in the back. There's what the eyelet ruffle looks like. And now what I want to do is just add some lace remnants for my next layer. This is a really beautiful one, kind of a net lace, but I'll show you more of that in a second. But to prepare this for the different lace remnants, I took my Taylor's chalk and I just went around and drew sort of an asymmetrical line. So you probably can't see this too good. So I will show you where I drew. And my heights range from three and a half to five inches, but it varies all the way around. So I kind of dipped low in the front and then I came up higher on the side, low again, a little higher in the back, and then swoop down like this. Now that's about three and a half inches and back to the front. And now what I need to do is just play with my lace and cut it to where I think I want it. And I don't think I'm going to do a lot of pleating with this. I'm going to sew that pretty straight on unless I'm on a curve and I have to pleat it slightly so that it lays nice. But um, I'll get some cut and pinned on so you can see what my thought process is here. Here's what it looks like from a distance. I just have these pinned. Then I'll bring you in closer and show you what I did. This is where your own creativity and artistry comes in. You know, so I pinned everything on that red line that I drew. And a lot of the doilies I cut in half. Now, my main objective here was to cover that stitch line of the ruffle. So everything covers that. And a trick to pinning this on, weave your pins in and out a couple times. Some of this fine lace, the pins really like to hop out of it here, let me. So here I just have, this is kind of a rectangle doily. It has a little bit of a design on it. This is a full doily. And I'm just overlapping them a little bit, each one. Now, because I have a curved line, some of these will have a pucker like this. And when I'm at my machine sewing, I will just have to lay that down nicely, kind of pinch it in there. And it will have a little bit of a pleat, but that's unavoidable and will be cute. So here's another like three quarter piece of a doily. Just get them all pinned on. Now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and across the top line here, I'm going to use a zigzag stitch because these doilies have big holes and I feel like a zigzag stitch is more secure, catching as much of the doily as I can get. So I will just go all the way around with a zigzag stitch. Okay, so here everything is sewn on. Well, not everything, that layer. And this is starting to get pretty heavy, so make sure you have a nice, secure waistband so it doesn't fall off of you. 
So the next thing I want to do is add some scrap lace. Now, this lace, I have them as small as this and as big as this. And these are things I'll probably just have to cut as I'm sitting at my machine sewing. And what I want to do, let me raise you up a little bit. What I want to do is just sit at my machine. I'm not going to draw any lines on, but what I, I want to add two more rows of lace. Now, some may overlap this a little bit, but that's not my goal here. I will be okay with some space in between. So I'll do a smaller roll of lace and I'll just have it asymmetrical, kind of like we did this. And then above that, I'll do the same thing. Now, you know, I just had this one I'll have to cut. Some will be big, some will be small. And there's no exact way to tell you to do this, except I'll just show you when I've done what I ended up doing. So I'll just stick it back in my machine and just kind of have fun with it and just be artistic. And I will use my largest zigzag stitch to get those sewn on. Okay, so here's the two rows I just sewed on. You know, I just let the doilies and the skirts sort of speak to me. Some of them I pleated. Some of them I kind of left a little tail. There's some more little tails. There's no exact science to this. Just have fun with that. Okay, so I want to add a little bit of detail. I have so this little basket full of flowers whenever I have a spare flower I throw it in here so I can always grab it when I want it and I am just going to add a couple little flowers now I am dyeing this light blue and this will probably come out light blue but a different shade because it's peach I have no idea actually <laughs> It's always a fun surprise to see what these things do. And then um, I have another little yellow flower and I will pin that. I am not pinning these to the skirt because I'm trying to avoid having to slide my whole entire skirt back into my sewing machine. It gets kind of cumbersome when you get tons of stuff on here like this. So I'll just have to go to my machine and just sew it onto that piece of lace instead of the skirt and now I think I'll put trying to put them in front so that they're seen so maybe I'll put one right here okay so now I'm going back to a tablecloth that I've been cutting on here and there and it's kind of flowy I like the lace on that so I cut a bunch of strips you know a few feet long some are wider, some are thinner. And I want to just do a little cascade of flowy little ribbons. So I am going to, I can either just sew them on like this, or I can make a loop like this, however you want. And I am just going to pin some to the lace. You know, I don't desire to, decide until the last second sometimes how I want these to be. So I put a little loop in that one. Pin it on. Okay, I'll probably just add a couple more. And then when I get that all pinned on, I will go to my machine and I will just use a straight stitch on these. Now the flower, I will just use a straight stitch and just sort of go around the edge, not super close because I wanted to have some dimension. And the same with this flower, I'll sew it in a circle. And then these, I will just sew with a straight stitch right across the top here. Let me pin this one on. Might as well do the last one while you're here, huh? 
Yeah. Maybe here. Okay. Now I'll go get those sewn on. Okay. Here's what it's looking like. Beautiful, right? I love it. What I want to do is add, okay, this is a 100% silk shirt. I'm going to make a couple flowers out of that. And I have some silver sequins that I want to add to it. But I need to dye it first because I'm using Dye More Synthetic uh, Dye. And it will dye just about anything. I've heard of people dyeing their phone cases with it, bowling balls. So these sequins and this silk, I don't want blue. I want them silver and pink. So I can't add those until after I dye this. So let's go dye it. First thing I'm going to do is fill a large pot with water, enough water so that fabrics can move around freely. I'm going to heat the water until it's barely simmering. I need to get my fabrics wet before I put them in the pot. So I've got the skirt and I have this little summer top that I'm going to dye so that it goes with it. And I'm going to attempt to dye that necklace. But first I need to wet the top and the skirt in my sink and wring it out. Now I'm going to pour my dye in. This is called Kentucky Sky. And one to two bottles is typical, but I am just doing a small splash because I want mine pretty light in color. And be sure to stir it up. You can use a paper towel to test the color. Now that's not enough, so I'm going to have to add a little more dye. Another splash. I tested it again, very light, but that's what I want. Now I'm going to put my garments and my necklace in and constantly stir for 30 minutes. Okay, so I ended up using about three fourths of the bottle. I kept kind of adding <laughs> as it was cooking here. When the half hour is up, take it out and rinse it until the water runs clear. Here's the necklace. It dyed a little. You can barely tell unless you hold it against like a white paper towel. Very pretty. Okay, so now I'm just going to wash these in my washer in cold water on a gentle cycle with laundry soap. And I will tumble dry mine. You can line dry yours if you want. Okay, right out of the dryer. I've had some people ask to see what it looks like right out of the dryer before I trim off any excessive fraying. Here's the top. It's just fine. I don't need to trim. So let's take a look and see what the skirt looks like. Okay, so I had some strings here and some long lace. That kind of stuff usually gets kind of tangled. You have to untangle that when it gets out of the dryer washer. So I'll just make sure those are all untangled. Now this is tangled, has a little bit of fringy stuff on it and I've cut off. But for the most part, this really didn't fray a whole lot. Some of this sheer fabric has some fraying and I like some fraying, but that piece was just too long. So I just go around and check for any super long pieces of fraying. But for the most part, I like this sort of frame. Not too bad at all. Okay. okay, so here's what it's looking like so far. Okay, so now I want to add a couple pink silk flowers. So to make the flowers, I'm going to use this 
I already cut on it. This 100% silk, kind of mauve pink thrifted shirt. Okay, to make my two flowers, I need two long rectangles cut out of the shirt. Now this is a smaller flower, I already made it, and this will be the larger one. This size is 36 by seven, and the rectangle used for this was 28 by five inches. Now all I do to start is I fold it in half, wrong sides together, lining up the edges the best I can down here. I have a tutorial on how to make fabric flowers like these and what you can do with them. And it's very detailed and I'll put the link to that in my description. But I'll show you sort of quickly how I make these. I will take a needle and thread. It's doubled and knotted at the end and it's about two foot long. And I will go to the corner of the open end here and I will catch both sides of that fabric and I will do just like a little double stitch right there to secure it. And then I will just weave it in and out in about half inch sections, half inch stitch lengths maybe, all the way down. And then when I get all the way to the end, I'm going to just scrunch this up. And I won't do it super tight, about like that. And then I'm going to take my needle, it's still attached here, and I am just going to make a couple little knots. Here I have a loop. I like to just stick my needle through that loop. Pull it do it again so that it doesn't come undone. Now I'm just going to play with this a little bit and get all that pleating sort of even. And I still have my thread and needle attached. I'm going to drop that to the table and where it's attached, that'll be the bottom of my flower. So I will just start winding this around until it looks like a rose or a flower. That's a little big. I'm gonna go a little tighter. You know, you just play with it. You may have to wind and unwind a couple times to get it to the shape and size that you want. Okay, now I'm just holding it, but that's what it looks like right now. I am going to take this thread and needle that I dropped, and I am going to begin stitching this together. It's kind of thick and tough right here. Silk can be a little tricky to get your needle through. I will have to thread another needle to finish sewing this, but I like having some length left because I will have to let go of this to thread another needle and I don't want it all to fall apart. So this just helps it stay sort of secure until I can get my other needle and thread ready. Okay. You just go in and out. You go in through the back. Just find a spot on the back. I like to try to stay as much towards the middle as I can. You just go back and forth until you feel it's pretty secure or until you run out of thread. Okay, once you feel it's secure, I kind of check the sides like this to see if it's going to come apart. So when I'm all done, I will just stick my needle through the back, make a loop, stick my needle through the loop and do that a couple times so that it's secure. Clip the thread off. Now I have two roses. Okay, so 
I have these roses temporarily pinned on. I just have one pin in each, and that's about where I want them, the big ones here, the small ones here. Now, before I sew those on, I want to do one more thing. That should be my middle name. One more thing, Tracy, Tracy one more thing. Okay, so I have this green doily. I must have been dyed for another project. I don't know, but I have it. And so I cut a strip off like this, and I'm going to fold it almost in half. One end will be a little shorter than the other. And I want to put that right underneath the flower. So this is where the flower will be. Now I can remove that flower, and I'm going to pin this on right there. And I'm going to do the same down here. I'm just going to cut a piece off the doily here. And I will put that right underneath where this flower is going to go. Now I can remove that for now. And then I will take it to my machine and I am just going to sew these on just with a straight stitch right across the top because the flower will be going over that anyway. You really won't see that stitching. Now I'm sewing the flowers right over top of that green lace and I usually sew in the center, up at the top, on the side, down at the bottom, and on the other side. And I'll do like five stitches in each one of those places. And I'm at the top right now. Okay, so here are the sequins that I'm going to use. They're silver, six millimeter cup sequins. I got these on Amazon and they're $7.99. I'll put a link in my description. These will probably last me my lifetime. I probably will never have to buy any more. And then what I'm going to use are seed beads. These tiny little beads. And I never really have to go buy seed beads. I have enough necklaces and thrifted bracelets and things. I can always find seed beads somewhere. So I am just going to clip this necklace and let them fall into my tub. First, I'm just going to lay some of my sequins and seed beads on some sort of cloth. I'm going to show you on this little piece of felt how I will bead these. It will be a lot easier than um, trying to show you on my skirt. So I just have a piece of thread doubled and knotted and we're pretending this is the skirt. I am just going to go up from behind and then I will take my sequin and this is cupped and I have the concave side up and I will just push that all the way down to my fabric and then I'm going to grab a seed bead and put it on my needle and slide it down on top of the sequin. Now I am going not back through the same hole as the seed bead, but on the outside of it, down into the sequin hole, and pull it nice and tight. And then I will just go on the back and go to where I want my next sequin and do the same thing. Now I'll show you the placement of my sequins on the skirt when I get them placed and actually probably sewn where they need to be. Easy, easy. Now 
Okay, so this is where I sewed the sequins. I did a few at the top and then down on the side here. Okay, it's all finished. I'm going to go put it on and show you what it looks like. Okay, here it is all done. So fun. You know, whether you call it boho or hippie chic, log and look, prairie, gypsy. Once you sort of master this layering technique, you could do this to a tunic. You could do it to a beautiful dress, bloomers. It's wide open. I'm going to slow it down now so you can get a closer look. And I thank you so, so much for watching.